If you listened carefully to all three of our readings today, you might notice that there is a common thread that weaves throughout the three readings. And that common theme tells us that God's ways are not our ways. Each of the readings becomes a challenge to the thinking of the people who might hear these words or read them. The readings tell us about the secularism that takes us away from God's ways. The challenge that we are presented is that we are to listen to God's ways and follow with trust and all will be well. We heard in the gospel how Jesus took a child and stood that child in their midst. And so in staying faithful to the gospel, I would like to share with you a children's story. And the story has to do with three trees growing in a forest. And the first tree one day said that they hoped that when they got bigger, they would be cut down and they would be turned into the most beautiful treasure chest you could imagine. That it would be covered in gold and in jewels and everyone would rave about this beautiful treasure chest. And so the little tree continued to grow. The second tree said that it hoped that when it came time for it to be cut down, it would be turned into a luxury liner. It wanted to travel the oceans and the seas, and it wanted to see foreign countries and to carry people to many different lands. Its hope was to be a great cruise liner. And finally, the third tree said that when it grew, it hoped that it would just continue to stand on the mountain, pointing people's way to God. Many years passed, and eventually some wood carvers did indeed come to the forest. The first little tree was cut down, and the man who cut it down said that it was to be used for something special. It was to be used as a manger that there was a need for a feed box for a particular area. The little tree was very sad because its hopes of being a great treasure chest were suddenly destroyed. And then one day, indeed the tree was turned into a manger. It was placed in a cave where animals were able to feed. And one night, the little tree heard a young mother and a father talking and saying that there was no place to lay their baby. And so the manger would have to do as the holder of this brand new infant. Suddenly, the little tree knew that it was holding something much more precious than it ever expected. And it held a newborn baby with great love. The second tree was also cut down 
It was brought to the lumber yard and there it was made into a ship or a boat. It wasn't the great ocean liner. And once again, the little tree was sad that its dreams of greatness would not be fulfilled. One day, as this, this little boat was out on the water, carrying a group of fishermen, a sudden storm arose. And one of the occupants of the boat was asleep. He was awakened and he simply said, peace. And the wind suddenly died down. The waters became calm. And the little boat knew that it was carrying someone very special who carried mighty powers. And so the little ship was pleased. Finally, the third tree was cut down. It was placed in a lumber shop for a number of years. And finally, one of the beams was chosen and was placed upon the shoulders of a prisoner. This prisoner walked through the streets, carrying the little tree on its shoulders. When they reached the hill, the prisoner was crucified. The little tree heard men jeering at the prisoner. Others were crying. Others were asking for forgiveness. Lightning happened and the clouds darkened. And the little tree knew right then and there that its job continued to point people in the direction of God. Now the moral of that children's story is that each of the trees had their own plans. They had their own thoughts as to what was going to make them most happy. When those plans initially were not met, the little trees were sad and disappointed. But in the end, their dreams were superseded by anything they could have ever hoped for or expected. So then, what does all of this have to say to us? Too often, we can be seduced by the marvels of secularism, of what society says is really important. But God tells us differently. And each of the readings spoke in a very different way of the way God's ways are not our ways. And the challenge is that we are to live God's ways and it is there that we find our true happiness and our true joy. I would invite you to continue to reflect upon the call that each of us have received. It is not a call to follow the ways of the secular society, but rather we are called to follow God's ways. And as the readings tell us, God's ways are not necessarily our ways. 